All right, joining us on the broadcast, we have a panel of experts to make sense of uh, India's surge in COVID-19 infections and also the latest as far as the AstraZeneca vaccine is concerned. Dr. Mufaza Laktawala, uh, Director uh, of uh, Surgery at the Reliance Foundation Hospital in Mumbai, uh, joins us. We also have Dr. Avinash Ponbe, former president of the IMA in Maharashtra. And we have Dr. Rajinder K. Dhamija, Professor in HOD of Neurology, Lady Harding Medical College in Delhi. He's also a member of the AEFI committee, which is the Adverse Events Following Immunization Committee for COVID-19 Vaccine. Thank you all very much for being with us. Uh, Dr. Dhamija, I want to begin by asking you, you're on the committee that follows adverse effects after immunization for the COVID-19 vaccine. I want to first begin by asking you about the safety of the AstraZeneca vaccine. There are four countries that have temporarily suspended the use of the vaccine uh, fearing blood clots. Now, this is, of course, the vaccine that's known as Covishield here in India and is being widely administered. Uh, thank you, Vishika, for having me on the show. It's always a pleasure. Uh, you know, the, uh, the, the strict safety uh, monitoring protocols in India for the vaccination com campaign. So there are state level committees, there are district level committees, and there's national level committees. So I'm one, one of the members, uh, I'm in, in one of these committees. Mm -hmm. So obviously we are looking at every uh, monitored uh, side effect which are reported to us. And so far we have not come across any major side effects. Leave apart the thromboembolic phenomena, but we are talking about uh, deep vein thrombosis or pulmonary embolism. Hmm. Uh, no death has been report, re reported to us so far, uh, linked to any any of these vaccines. So obviously, the 30 cases which have been uh, reported uh, all over the world, we don't know the cases. What are their age profile? What are the risk factors? Underlying conditions, comorbid conditions. Why did they have this DVT and pulmonary embolism? So it looks like that it, it is not linked to the vaccine. It could be otherwise also. Right. Uh, you know, there, there is data of 10 million cases. In India also, we have, have millions of cases being yes. given jab of COVID-19, uh, COVID shield vaccine. So obviously, this is not a matter of concern to us and we should continue to aggressively vaccinate given the surge hmm. and the impending second wave as of now you're talking about. All right. I think this is very important clarification, Dr. Dhamija, that you're making, um, that there is a whole host of factors that actually need to be investigated before one can arrive at the conclusion that the vaccine is indeed not safe. So the vaccine is safe. It is widely being used in AstraZeneca and the World Health Organization have both come out and said that. Now I want to shift our focus uh, to the other aspect of today's discussion, which is, of course, the worrying surge in COVID-19 infections. Uh, Dr. Mufazal, if I can come to you at this moment, uh, you know, as someone who uh, is, you know, you are you are a resident doctor in Mumbai. I want to understand from you what explains this surge in Maharashtra on a daily basis. We are seeing cases in Maharashtra continue to rise. Are you at all worried about variant strains that 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 we are perhaps not being able to identify effectively? Good morning, Rishika. I mean, it would be uh, stupid to say that nobody would be worried with the rising cases. I think everyone, including the government, the citizens, the doctors, everyone from the frontline uh, workers should be worried. I believe that the biggest reason for this massive surge suddenly or this second wave that we're talking about is probably something that I call as corona complacency, lack of corona fear, and just the attitude, ke chalta hai attitude that we have in India, that so many people have survived. The fear of Corona is gone. So let's go out and live our lives. The government had to open up the uh, cities and the states uh, because the economic condition was worsening. And given this careful opening up, people have let go of all the precautions. People don't wear masks. People have let go right. of social distancing. And once vaccination has opened up, people believe that once they've got one jab, it's as good as they can walk around without a mask and do whatever. But so I think it's just... But Dr. Lack Mufasal, of... no, Dr. Mufasal, the reason I ask you this question specifically pertaining to variant strains is because Maharashtra is seeing a disproportionate rise as compared to other states. The numbers are rising pan-India, but it is over 50% of India's cases at the moment or our daily case tally is because of Maharashtra. Um, like I've said before, that Maharashtra was one of the first states to shut down its borders. Unfortunately, uh, we have very porous borders. So people have uh, used this stupidly to try and come okay. into Maharashtra from various sources, either by land or via uh, landing in different parts of India and entering Maharashtra. So it's very difficult to kind of control this 
uh, behavior from people when they are irresponsible and cause infections to other people. I think uh, talking about different strains, we need to understand that, yes, there is the Kent strain, which is highly infectious, which has come into India now. Uh, a lot of cases have been picked up. But most importantly, if we were to isolate ourselves, if we were to be positive with symptoms, I think we would be able to control this. Right. Uh, Dr. Avinash, would you agree that, I mean, there is COVID complacency and one is witnessing that uh, firsthand, you know, if you just step out of your homes and enter into a market, mask compliance has gone down. But what explains the disproportionate rise in cases in Maharashtra vis-a-vis -vis other parts of the country? Rishika ji, thank you very much. Uh, this uh, rise is itself explains that this is something big down. If you look at uh, uh, with uh, uh, analysis that the number of cases uh, in Maharashtra are increasing. Uh, yesterday the rise was 15,817. Yes. yes. And uh, if you see, if you see that 90% of the cases in these are asymptomatic. Most of them, 80% of people are from 20 to 40 years age group. The death rate is still there. It means that uh, it has changed its uh, uh, this thing. That they are, it is very uh, rapidly increasing. But the uh, asymptomatic patients are increasing. Uh, we have uh, been observed that there are some symptoms like uh, nausea, vomiting, and uh, anosmia, that is lack of smell. Hmm. These people, these type of uh, uh, symptoms are increasing. And there is every chance to think that this is a mutant or variant virus which has evolved itself in Maharashtra. If you see, uh, Maharashtra has right from uh, the initial period, it's been the highest uh, number of cases are there. And hmm. so we must think that uh, it is uh, uh, some mutant uh, which okay. uh, originated in Maharashtra itself. So you're saying that there is a possibility of a mutant yeah. strain spreading yeah. in, in Maharashtra? Yeah, and unfortunately there is uh, no uh, specific uh, uh, research or observation or nothing is done uh, yes. like genome sequencing to prove that uh, to rather disprove that it is not Maharashtra state only the statements are being made but right. if you observe if you compare it uh, this uh, as a uh, sudden rise in uh, Britain right. uh, in England in uh, December so, yes it is just a similar thing well absolutely and it all started like this even in in Britain in September you're absolutely right as far as your assessment is concerned the question is are we doing enough to be able to contain uh, these mutant strains Dr. Dhamija I want to also ask you about Delhi because while of course you know Maharashtra is the big focus with the restrictions that have been put in place uh, you know lockdowns in select areas that have been put in place I want to ask you about Delhi as well because even in Delhi we are seeing over 400 cases uh, you know Punjab is seeing an exponential rise as well the health ministry has issued an advisory for Delhi NCR to be watchful about the rise in cases as well absolutely Rishika uh, if you see over last three weeks in fact from the first of March uh, a week earlier also the trajectory of seven day average has been rising in Delhi hmm. so it's more than double now from 200 to 431 yes. cases last year in last 24 hours and this is a, this is a surge which we have been worried uh, and we have been talking since last June that this will come yes. uh, in multiple waves and this is the either you call it third wave or fourth wave but definitely it's a multiple wave so what I need to tell you is that what we should do actually and it is the the uh, pandemic is not over actually it is uh, yes. it is still there and the virus is not gay, gone uh, the the vaccine has come the the new year has come but the yes. the virus is still around us okay so what we need to focus on aggressive contact tracing now 30 is to 1 or 15 is to 1 so, so we are talking about aggressive every contact tracing and as many have said even yes. quarantine you know reinitiate yes. the process of institutional quarantine Absolutely. in pockets where the Absolutely. virus is spreading rapidly dr the, mufaza only, yes dr yeah, mufaza just, just one second. One second, I'll just take one third, so yes. uh, 30 seconds. Not only the aggressive uh, tracing, but aggressive testing and opening up the vaccination. So now these uh, the people less than 45, they are the ones who are moving around most of the times and spreading yes. the infection. So we need to focus on that also. And the fourth one is avoid these large crowds, gatherings and all these uh, the, the events. So that is also the fourth thing which we, we should be done immediately. Well, absolutely. And, and, and perhaps a more liberalized norms for vaccine may actually, you know, increase the vaccination numbers. Uh, but Dr. Mufazal, you know, quick last question to you. Many say that the upward trajectory of COVID-19 cases in India once again 
could in fact be the onset of a second wave. However, thankfully, so far, the uptick in cases is not uh, being met with an uptick in the number of deaths. Is the second wave, therefore, going to be less dangerous? Can we say that? It's too early to say this, Rishika. We do not yet know. Most of the deaths initially happened because the healthcare systems were overburdened. My biggest fear is that today we've got some kind of corona fatigue. The healthcare systems have been overburdened for quite a time now, for more than a year. Mm -hmm. If, God forbid, these numbers were to continue to rise and these uh, healthcare systems are again overburdened, I would shudder to think what would happen. So let's not be complacent. Let's try and uh, completely try and control this second wave if there is any uh, contact trace, like Dr. said. Actually go out and aggressively look for uh, the positive spreaders and try and stop this right here and right now. All right. I think that's very crucial uh, advice as far as uh, our doctors are concerned that this surge has to be stopped in its tracks right now. And of course, it is up to each individual as well. You have to continue to wear your mask, maintain social distancing and be responsible if you do test positive for the coronavirus. Thank you so much, doctors, for sparing your time early on Saturday morning and joining us with your perspectives. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thanks for having me.